Hey, it's Tesla Canuck. Welcome back to another video. It is currently minus 14 degrees Celsius. And last year I did a test where I looked at the range after preconditioning in a cold weather temperature, and it was about minus 14. So in the last year, there's been a lot of software updates and just about every update has said cold weather improvements. So I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to compare. So I'm going to compare my video from, I guess, almost exactly one year ago to today. And we're going to see, I'm going to do the same route that I did last year. And we're going to see if all of these cold weather improvements have actually uh, meant something in terms of improved range. Our starting point, uh, let's see, we're at 78% right now. Let's just double check there. Yeah, we're at 78%. And um, yeah, let's see uh, what the stats are going to be. I'm actually going to use an app called Teslab app. And after we get through the driving portion of the test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the studio and that's where I'm going to compare uh, the results with the last year. So let's get started with the driving portion uh, right now. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to if I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> Actually, I think it's just in the app uh, launcher here. I want to put on the energy graph and uh, that way we will be able to see the real-time energy use as I'm going along this drive. And what I'll do is I'll only chime in if there's something worthwhile mentioning. Like if something happens and I think uh, it's, it's a good idea to talk about it, then I'm gonna chime in. Otherwise, I'm going to fast forward, um, you know, speed up the video, maybe throw in a little bit of music. Uh, so if you want, you can watch through and watch the energy graph as I go through the entire trip. It'll be at like 20x speed or something like that. Uh, and then, yeah, like I said, I'm going to go back into the studio and compare the results after. So let's um, actually, you know what? There's a little bit more context here that you should be aware of. So I mentioned that I preconditioned the battery. I had the car in an un uninsulated garage overnight, plugged in, and then I preconditioned the battery for about a half an hour. And another reason why I did that is because at the time of making this video, there's actually a firmware glitch and many people in colder climates are experiencing failures of their heating system in the Model Y. And one of the ways you can mitigate that is by preconditioning, preheating your, your car before you leave. So that's another reason why I wanted to do the, the preconditioning version of this uh, video. I also do one where I don't precondition just to see what the impact is on range if you just leave your house. So uh, I've preconditioned and yeah. All right, I'm gonna be quiet now. Let's uh, drive. You know, it's it's like Steve Jobs. Um, one more thing. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use autopilot on this test so that I can maintain a consistent speed with an objective of doing about 10 kilometers over the speed limit or 10% over the speed limit. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because I want it to do more of a real world because most people don't drive exactly at the speed limit. So I figured by going 10% over the speed limit, that's going to encompass a lot more realism uh, around this test. So there we go. Now I'm going to be quiet. Let's drive.
as we head back into town and back to our starting point a couple other things i just want to kind of draw your attention to so one is that i conduct this test on a loop and in theory the wind elevation those type of things should net out uh, that's why i do that uh, so what we'll do is we'll go back to the starting point and i'm going to just kind of briefly look at the trip uh, so that we can get a flavor for <laughs> how it worked out. Then I'm going to go back to the studio, as I mentioned, and do a full comparison to conclude the video. All right, so just looking at the energy consumption graph here, this loop is about 50 kilometers. So I'm going to go to the actual trip information, but it looks like an average of 211 uh, watt hour kilometer. I'm going to convert that to the US system <laughs> when I produce the video. I'll put a little note at the bottom. I have no idea what that is in Imperial. Okay, so let's um, take a look here at the trip. Is it uh, in here? No, it's over here. Still getting used to version 11. <laughs> uh, trips right there. Okay, so we did. 52 kilometers duration of 50, 43 minutes an average of 222 watt hour kilometer and again i'll convert that um my gut instinct compared to last year's this is going to be worse performance on the left hand side of the screen we can see the trip from december 2020 overall efficiency was 67 percent now that being said that trip the weather wasn't quite as cold. It was minus eight. And also there was, well, there was an additional kilometer driven though. That was due to some construction around the area. Um, so, you know, and if we compare that to the right-hand side, which is January, 2022, which is the drive I just took, the overall efficiency was 61% at minus 14. So the trip was shorter and it was colder, but, the efficiency was less so either the additional cold had a larger impact um, than the extra kilometer in back in december 2020 or the conclusion here is that there really hasn't been that much of a improvement or no improvement at all in the overall efficiency for winter driving in spite of all of the quote unquote um, updates that had the winter driving or cold weather improvements. So at this point, you know, it's it's close enough and it was colder, so I'm gonna call it a draw, but it's pretty clear that there aren't massive improvements in range in cold weather due to these updates that we've received. 